Hello, my name is Bob Scheibel, and I am chair of Maine Voices for Palestinian Rights. This organization has been around now for about two years. Our aim is to do outreach, educational outreach, about the Israel-Palestine conflict. Our main thrust, as our title suggests, is we are in favor and we work toward helping Palestinians achieve full human and political rights. Um, we bring in films, we bring in speakers, we sometimes bring in musicians, and we distribute lots of literature. Our belief is that only when Palestinians have these rights with the Israeli, uh, with the Israeli state, the state of Israel, will it be able to have the kind of security and um, stable relations with its Arab neighbors. So we're for that as well. Now, for today's program, I'm very pleased to have Carol Huntington, uh, I believe it's Reverend Carol Huntington, who uh, is part of a group of women who are going to be giving a presentation on the Friday the 24th, whose presentation is the 24th, and the program is called Five Women Witness, Two Weeks in Palestine. Carol, glad you could be here. Thank you for having me. Would you, um, I hesitated just a little bit, but you're a reverend, so you're in which church? Tell me what's your connection okay. to the church. I'm an ordained deacon in the Episcopal Diocese of Maine, and I am non-stipendary, which means I volunteer my work, mm -hmm. and I am um, focusing my ministry on peace and justice issues. Oh, good. I today am speaking as an individual. Mm. I do not represent the Episcopal Church in I what see. I'm going to say today. Okay. And um, this is an issue, the issue we're talking about, of course, is the Israel-Palestine conflict. How long have you been involved in this issue and how did you come to be engaged in it? I first learned about this issue in the 70s wow, when Ed Rodman, who was the um, mis urban missioner in the Diocese of Maine, talked about um, the Arabs and um, that in the United States we know nothing about mm -hmm. um, Arabs. Right. But I really didn't get into it until about four or three or four years ago. Uh -huh. And I learned through the Episcopal Peace Fellowship. Um, Which what, is a part, an aspect of the yeah, Episcopal Church? Yeah, it's a separate arm. It's not part. It's a, an independent arm. Members, Episcopalians who are concerned oh. about peace and justice. I see. I see. So that's how I learned about four years ago about Palestine. All right. Now, this is five women witness, and these women come from different states, I think. Yes. Uh, you tell us what states and how did you wind up getting together with four other women from right. around New England? I had gone um, a year, just over a year ago, I went to Palestine on a witness visit with Sabil for two weeks. And, and what when is Sabil? Sabil is the uh, Ecumenical Liberation Theology Center in East Jerusalem. All right. And I went, um, and it's, I couldn't remember anything. I was so overwhelmed by that, mm. it, that trip. So I recruited these four other women ah. with the help of Linda McVeigh, who is the chair of the outreach committee. Mm -hmm. The group um, that I am a member of is called the Society of Companions of the Holy Cross. Mm. And they're a religious community of and this Anglican is also, women. Okay, also within the Episcopal Church. Yes, Anglican and Sabi women. Okay, uh, women. Yes. Okay, and uh, Sabeel then is clearly, this is a Christian organization. Oh, yes, yes. Well, you it's know, an, that's, I asked it's that. It's an because, ecumenical yes. um, Christian. All right. I asked that and just want to clarify that because I think for a lot of people it comes as news that there is a Christian community <laughs> among the Palestinians. And I used to be, I was kind of surprised when I first learned that, and then I had a kind of a duh-huh moment when I realized, well, wait a minute, that's where Jesus came from. <laughs> you know, so it kind of makes Jesus sense. was a Palestinian Jew. Yeah, yeah, a Palestinian Jew. So it kind of makes sense there might be some Christians there. Yeah. Now, um, tell me, you've been to Palestine and Israel now two times? Yes, two times in a year. I in was a year. really blessed. People sent me. 
wow. including your organization, for Thank which you. I'm grateful. Yes. Um, how did, um, when were you last there? Uh, we, we were there in November 2012 for I two see. weeks. Okay, and that was with these four companions yes. of yours. Oh, and you yes. asked where they're from. They're yes. from Massachusetts, Rhode Island, excuse me, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine. Okay. Um, what did you take away from it? What did you see there? I came away with a sense of uh, peace-loving people, people who are, in my view, oppressed, um, who are working with uh, peace-loving Jews and Muslims, mm -hmm. Christians, Jews, and Muslims working together in nonviolently in direct action for peace in Palestine, Israel. Uh -huh. And it was overwhelming. Um, uh, one of my main interest is in nonviolence work. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm uh, trained in doing nonviolence trainings. Okay. So I learned firsthand how people who are amidst um, violent actions every day can mm. respond nonviolently with love. Hmm. So you witnessed some of that when you were there. It was overwhelming. Hmm. Did, um, let me ask you this, it maybe is a kind of tough question. Um, you frequently see in the news, you will see young boys usually throwing mm -hmm. rocks. Mm -hmm. Now, is that considered nonviolent or is that violent? When, when, I don't know. How's that for an answer? Okay. <laughs> um, I look at it proportionality. Mm -hmm. uh, just War Theory talks about the importance of proportionality. And when I see young boys throwing rocks on videos, I didn't, I've never seen it when I was over there. Mm -hmm. I was in the West Bank. Right. Um, I am seeing um, the Israeli Defense Force and settlers armed with to military the... rifles in protective gear right. attacking these people, yeah. these boys, mm -hmm. with tear gas, with rubber bullets, sometimes with live, live uh, certainly ammunition. with live ammunition. Right. And I have seen young boys age nine on top of uh, vehicles or in front of soldiers and soldiers and settlers using these nine-year-old children as human shields. Mm. So, so it, it's a matter of context. Yeah. I, I, I think when I hear the news, if I think of uh, and hear news about rocks being thrown at passenger cars going by, to me, that's a different category because you may very well cause somebody to have a wreck, an accident, and I think a couple of cases like that have happened. But I want to distinguish, as you do, between that and throwing at a tank or an army vehicle or these soldiers who have full riot gear on right. and are using these other weapons right. against them. Um, what You've got five of you, so what, what are you women likely to be talking about? I don't want to... That's okay. What, what, are you, what, are you, what is your We We talk program? about, um, actually it's on your list here, if to be inclusive, I think. Um, maybe it's not. Um, yes, home, def home demolitions, okay. refugee camps, right. the separation wall, yeah. uh, the spirit of the Palestinian people, yes. the Kairos Palestine document, yeah, which is something a lot of people don't know about. That's a document, right? A letter from the Christian communities of Palestine right. to their fellow Christian, their brothers and sisters around the world, including right. here. Rabbis for Human Rights and Interfaith um, Nonviolent Direct Action. Okay. So that's what we talk about. All right. You know, I think it's worthwhile for people to know how broad is the support for this work here in Maine. So, uh, if you don't object, I'm just going to read out the list of co-sponsors. The co-sponsors for your presentation 
are the Chaplaincy Institute of Maine, the Churches for Middle East Peace, Maine, the Episcopal Peace Fellowship, Maine, Greater Brunswick Peace Works, the Maine Council of Churches, our organization, Maine Voices for Palestinian Rights, the Multicultural Student Affairs Office at USM, the Social Action Committee at Allen Avenue Unitarian Universalist Church, Pax Christi, Maine, and the Peace Action Maine, and then finally the Social Justice and Peace Commission of the Sacred Heart St. Dominic Church. That's a pretty broad coalition, and I think uh, it's helpful for people to know this. I think the, and I wonder if you would agree with this, that the awareness of this issue and the awareness that the Palestinians have a side of this story that's not really known is becoming better known. It is in the past two or three years and our media has started to cover it. Yes. Finally. Finally. Very good. And let's see, this event of yours is at the uh, Muskie Center, or the, I think it's the Muskie Ali Center, but it's, the building is the Wish Camper okay. Center, and I believe it's the 24th, and it's 7 o'clock. I look forward to it. Thank you for having me so much. Thank you so much for coming. Bye now. Bye-bye.